Another day, another EV, electrical vehicle company has made its way onto our radar and I can totally understand why because frankly, they're really fascinating, really interesting and high potential companies and it's really interesting having a look through what they've got to offer. And right out of the gates, Workhorse is saying that they are changing the way the world works. See what I did there? But with so many EV companies coming up, we need to be able to make a distinction between them and understand what separates them from each other and work out if they can exist in the same industry at the same time. And what makes Workhorse unique and different is that they actually operate in a different space to the likes of Tesla and Hylion and Nikola and all of those sort of companies. They're targeting the last mile delivery market, not the heavy vehicle market. And that alone makes them unique and gives them a chance to become the leader and a major player in that particular space. Not to mention that their vans are frighteningly reminiscent of Postman Pat's van. And if you're too young to know who Postman Pat is, then screw you. And if you do remember who he is, give him a shout out in the comment section down below. I'm turning 30 this year, guys. I need to know that I'm not too old, not yet. So in classic Dan fashion, I spent a lot of time researching Workhorse on your behalf and condensed it all down into a short video. And believe me, this video was not that easy for me to make into a tight, concise video. There was so much info that I wanted to cram in and I wanna give you all of that knowledge if I can. But please remember, I'm not a financial advisor. This is general advice only. It's my research. I encourage you to speak to a professional before you make financial decisions on your own behalf. All right. Hold on to your hat because we're going in deep, y'all. It's no secret that in recent times, a lot of these EV companies have bobbed up and made their way onto our radar. And it feels like a real flood wave. They've just come in out of nowhere. Anyone's allowed in. Let them in. Let them in. David Letterman. And considering the growth of Tesla's market cap in an industry where they're not actually selling the most vehicles, that holds a hell of a lot of weight. And that EV market suddenly starts to feel like it's growing some wings. So what's happening very cleverly is these new EV companies are starting to leverage Tesla's popularity and their influence to boost their own brands. And they can do that without being direct competitors, which is a huge, huge advantage. It's almost like Tesla has paved the way for these new companies. And over the last few weeks, especially, Workhorse has been able to gain some real track Shun. See what I did there? That was a stretch. That was a stretch. Surprisingly, Workhorse has actually been around for a while. They were listed on the NASDAQ in 2006, but haven't found too much financial success over that time with their sales dropping over the last couple of years and they're still not a profitable company. But all of that could change. Workhorse have a few balls up in the air. They're working on some very, very key things. And if they get it across the line, that could be a massive game changer for them. And it's something we're gonna look at later in this video and it is well worth sticking around for. Believe me on that. Now, as I mentioned before, Workhorse are looking to take over the last mile delivery market, which is basically just short distance, high volume deliveries from workshops and factories to people's houses. The idea is that they've designed a variety of vehicles to sell to delivery companies like UPS, DHL, and FedEx, as well as large retail companies like Amazon, Walmart, and others that have huge fleets of trucks. So Workhorse's goal is to sell their vehicles to these major companies who will use them to deliver goods from factories, from warehouses, to people's doorsteps. And as it turns out, this is a bloody huge market with more than 350,000 delivery vehicles purchased by US fleets every year. And the average sale price for those vehicles is $50,000, which makes the addressable market roughly $18 billion. Guys, I'll be honest with you. I didn't know that was such a massive market. I was really surprised when I found that information out. And considering the general consensus is that e-commerce requires faster delivery, there might be some serious potential there. And in the future, there may be a need for what what Workhorse are trying to achieve, especially as we go more electric. We all know that we buy more and more online each year and we're becoming more and more impatient. One of Accenture Logistics studies showed that more than 80% of customers are willing to pay a $5 premium to receive their orders on the same day. So if Workhorse can successfully make a vehicle that is tailored to that market, they could be onto a real winner. And it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of competition at the moment in that space. And by the way, it does not end there for Workhorse. They're actually working on a drone drones to deliver goods. That's super unique, something totally out of left field. I didn't even know people were working on that until I started researching this company. So the drones have a carry capacity of about five pounds and can reduce the per package cost of deliveries by 95%, which is a hell of a lot of savings. And just for safe measure, they've actually patented them as well, which might be a really smart move. And that brings us to another piece of their tech that they're claiming is game changing. And that is the Workhorse Metron Telematics. Basically, it's a cloud-based, database-driven in 
self-built computer system that is self-learning. Man, that was a mouthful. It's designed to give customers access to real-time data and also shows optimized routes that the van could be taking for their deliveries, which theoretically should help cut costs because if you can optimize your route, travel a faster route, less distance, maybe with less traffic, all those things add up over time and save time and money. And in such a high volume, high pace industry with so many deliveries being done every single day from so many companies, so many vans, it's really important to maximize all those tiny little things and they end up adding up to large amounts of time and money in the long run. And by the way, if you're American, we say roots, you guys say routes. We're weird, I don't know, what are you gonna do about it? <laughs> in late June, their stock price skyrocketed, going up about 44%, and now WKHS has a 52-week range of $1.32 to $22.90. And if you're one of those people who bought in low and either held or sold when they went high, congratulations. You done did good. Now, what I like so much about that is the reason that the stock price went up so much. And it seems to be that the main contributing factor is that they completed the Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standards Test, another massive mouthful for me, on its C-Series electric vans. And Workhorse is now the only American all-electric last mile delivery vehicle to complete the testing. Another mouthful. What is with Workhorse? I'm telling you, this video was really hard to put together and filming this right now, this is not my first take, let's just say that. And guys, this really does appeal to me because this is what I would consider to be a competitive advantage. And that to me, if you've watched this channel before, you know a competitive advantage is as important as anything to me. So for Workhorse to be the only American all electric vehicle company to pass that test, that's a competitive advantage. Something interesting about Workhorse is it actually took them quite a long time to get their wheels turning, pun intended, and they got off to quite a slow start. And it's really only in recent years that they've started to make some moves and they do have some big things on the horizon. And the first of those things is that DHL ordered more than five dozen vehicles. And they also have about 1,100 pending orders from UPS, FedEx, Alpha Baking, WB Mason, and Ryder. Now that's all good and well, but they need to be able to fulfill these orders because if they start landing the big fish, like DHL, UPS, USPS, Amazon, all these companies, to land those big fish, they need to be able to manufacture and produce big numbers of vehicles and in a short amount of time. And that's where Lordstone comes into the picture. They entered a deal with Lordstown Motors, which enables them to manufacture 60,000 vehicles per year. And that gives them a home base to start taking big orders and also landing bigger deals. And by the way, they already have 400 vehicles on the road that have totaled more than 5 million driving miles collecting data. So their vehicles aren't just pro Prototypes. They're not just hypotheticals. They're actually in use today, getting results. And in fact, they work closely with UPS who helped them make significant improvements to their C-Series vans. Workhorse then took that data and feedback from UPS and used that to make these improvements. So they made their van lighter. They made it more cost-effective. They even increased the size of the cabin by lowering the floors, which helps them fit more cargo on board. They've increased the driving range per charge and they've even improved the battery's charging time. And since they've made these improvements, They've said that within three years, customers will start to see savings moving from gas operated vehicles to their electric alternative. And considering so many of these major companies have thousands and thousands of trucks in their fleets, sometimes hundreds of thousands, these are very welcome changes and every small improvement can make a really big difference, especially considering a lot of these companies like to drive their vehicles into the ground. They get every single mile that they possibly can out of them. So these are very welcome changes. And this is where the whole narrative starts to get really, really interesting. No more talks of big game, no more horseplay. This is the big stuff. Sorry, that pun was a bit of a stretch, but I can't help it, I love horsing around. All right, seriously, this is where it gets really interesting for Workhorse. In 2016, they won a prototype contract with USPS to build and deliver six units for USPS to drive, test, experiment with, which was completed in March last year, which sets the scene perfectly because in late 2019, USPS, United States Postal Service, issued an RFP to upgrade their entire fleet of around 200,000 trucks, a deal that will be worth roughly $6 billion. And this RFP means that a variety of companies Companies will apply to do that deal with USPS and Workhorse is one of them. And what's super interesting about that, and so many of us are gonna have a really different opinion, is that so much of their success falls on that one key deal. One key deal. That is going to be the linchpin. So if they can land that deal, 
The sky's the limit. They've got all this money that they can really start to launch their company with. And considering they already designed a prototype for USPS, a lot of the groundwork is already done. They've already made improvements from the UPS vehicle. So they, we know that they're putting out a good vehicle from what their perspective is. And the fact that their stock price has jumped so much in recent times, it makes me think that people are starting to build a bit of confidence and they think that they're going to win that deal. But if they don't get the deal, it's very hard to know where they're gonna go from there. And we'll go into their financials in a minute and it will make even more sense to you. Now, if it does play out well, the success can be twofold. Not only will they get $6 billion from that deal, but they also get a lot of street cred. And when that happens, companies tend to have a bit of a flow on effect. Suddenly there's a bit of FOMO. Suddenly there's a bit more interest. Suddenly all these companies come out of the woodworks and say, hey, if it's good enough for USPS, maybe it's good enough for us. And now the ball is rolling. And that brings me to probably what is my least favorite thing about Workhorse. And unfortunately, it's a really important one and that is their financials. And sure, you might argue that if they land this deal, none of that matters. But if they don't land the deal, that's where it becomes a real problem. So let's have a squiz over their balance sheet so you can see what I'm talking about. If you have a look over here, you can see that they have $31 million worth of current assets and $47 million of current liabilities, which is not a position you want to be in. And their total liabilities outweigh their total assets by $35 million, which again is not ideal. When companies have higher current liabilities than they do current assets, it means that they're relying on their short-term sales to keep them afloat. And it's not a position you want a company you're investing in to be in. And considering they have decreasing sales, especially in the last two years, couple that with the fact that they're not profitable, it just makes me wonder, can they weather a storm? Can they go through a recession and a really tough time in the future? It's very hard to see that being possible unless they do land this deal. So much is riding on this $6 billion USPS deal, or at least that's my opinion. I just want you guys to be aware that you're betting on the company being successful rather than investing in a company that has proven success. Please just understand that. I just want you guys to tread with caution. That's all I wanna get across. And I wanna give you all the facts rather than just the really exciting, glamorous stuff. I wanna paint the entire picture for you. So if you appreciate that, please give me a fat thumbs up, turn that sucker blue, scooch over, hit that subscribe button to join the family. And until next time, I'm Dan and you've been Dan Splain. See ya.